Oh, here. Ha, ha, ha. Oops. Now I gotta find it. I have all my stuff here. Oh, let's see. I'm not a. Oh. Let's see. Hi, Jerome B. Farm. How are you? Pick it. Hey, how you doing down there, Pick it? What is that? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, I you can't have your sound on. It's off. Hi, Jerome B. Farm. How are you? Okay. Um. Woo! It's hot. It was hot out here because I have um. I have um. We're doing good, Pickerick. Uh, I'm gonna get up for one of your 7:30 streams, Pickerick. I promise. I I really am. <laughs> I try, don't I? I try. I set the alarm. I try. I'll get there. It's called, you think so, Jerome? You're in Oklahoma. Okay, we're going to start. No, one minute. We started, um, we started, um, we started, um, let me give myself, give myself, at, um, Okay, I think we're back. Uh, okay, I th think we're back. I think. Um, times? Let me see now. Looks like it. Coming back. I think it's because it's cold here, so we're going to just get a move on. Um, couple, coming back. Thank you, Susan. Good to see you. Got my shawl right here, Susan. For my hot code. Okay, a couple of notes before we get to the B information. Um, oh. Um, oh. Um, what I did today is um, I, well, they're here. Let me find them. Yesterday, actually, I made, um, what are these things? Tea lights. Oh. Yeah. Um, thank you, Susan. I made little tea lights. I don't know. You can probably see them. And um, I have saved the containers from years and years and years ago. And I just melt down the wax. This is, you. on this one, it's really unique. It has two layers. The bottom is beeswax and the top is regular old whatever kind of wax from candles. Um, so if you have old candles or if you burn a lot of candles in the winter or especially during this season, the holiday season, um, it's a good idea to, um, to save all the wax. And 
I normally don't make candles. Let me show you what I, I use for these. Um, this is a um, official wax melter. You can see some of my wax maybe in the bottom. And you just throw the wax in here and put it on real, real low and melt it and then pour it into your molds. Um, and I have a larger one. I don't, everything okay, Susan? I, I don't know if I'm streaming or not. Anyway, I normally um, don't like to mess with candles because it's very difficult to clean up candle wax. That's why I only do soaps. <laughs> Soaps are very easy, folks. You just, you know, wash up the mess. But um, someone in one of the streams or somewhere said they used um, toilet paper rolls for molds for soaps. And uh, you can use those too. I just have it. I just use mostly tea can make tea candles, tea lights, because we have a lot of lights around candles here that use tea lights and also votives and I have a mold for the votives and I oil those with a little oil Vaseline or something like that very lightly and then when they're done I put them in the fridge to, to get them she says she hears me and sees me mm -hmm. a okay still I'll ask um, second on the list is um, one way I keep warm here for anybody that's out there in a cold home is when I wanted to know how to keep warm. Hi, Louisiana Therapy. Oh, you still can't see? No, I can see. I just don't have that. Oh, I forgot. I don't know what you did. I didn't do it. Um, um, no. Go back to where you were. Um, I just don't have that. Um, thank you. Um, I, um, mint bump. I haven't, I haven't, what's he selling that for? What are you doing? Bestseller for wax. So, really, Jerome? No, I don't. See, I haven't <laughs> done any of that. Uh, with our beeswax. Hi, Louisiana. I just, because I have um, so much invested in my soap making, the bees are something else that I just haven't gotten into. I, I do have some of the wax. Uh, Jerome, you're new here, so just a second. Um, okay. Uh, Jerome, I have jars. <laughs> left over from this summer and I try to sort it out you know um, light dark whatever I, I have several of these and I just jar it you know B man brings it back and I just jar it and um, say oh yeah I'm gonna make something one day I, I don't know whatever uh, but I normally don't use it okay next, you know hi Brenda how you feeling honey uh, next to keep to keep warm um, Long time ago when I was working, I wanted to know how to keep warm. And so I asked the best people in the world how to keep warm. Warm. Hunters, hi mom of four. Uh, the larva heat it up, not here. You have to keep it in an airtight jar, Jerome. Right here. There's no larva in here. Put it in um an airtight, airtight jar. If it would help, you can get some of those little um, oxygen absorbers that we use in our dehydrated foods. They're like, hi, mud pie girl. They're the little squares and you put them in the jar and it soaks all the oxygen up and the top goes pop because these are canning jars. You can try that, Jerome. So you may want to try this. You can also freeze it for two days if you've got any kind of yeah, if anything you, in there. If you freeze it, hi, grandpa's place. Hi, wholesome groups. If you, uh, you don't want to freeze it in the glass your own but if you freeze it for um um in the freezer and like plastic and then put it in here but i still might get the oxygen absorbers that's what we i use in my dehydrated stuff and it'll make it whatever but i i haven't done anything to this and there's nothing there's nothing in here i don't know so you know i check on it but there's nothing in there. okay next housekeeping um Back to the warmth, I asked the hunters. One thing was the little pads. Now, I got mine years ago, folks, so I can quote out, hi, host and roofs again. Yeah, um, the little pads hunters sit on, I got mine at five for $5 at a chain store like Kmart or someplace. Um, oh, they got wax moths. You're, in, you're down there where there's uh, wax moths, Jerome, in the south, yeah. Um, don't freeze it. Larva hatch out if I, yeah, yeah, Jerome. Hmm. Yeah, try it. It kills them. But anyway, I got the little things that hunters sit on. You sit on them, and after a couple of minutes, hey, Grizz, Grizz will tell you about this. It starts heating. <laughs> he
If that bread is starts heating, yeah. I have those. I got one of those. And you can also, uh, ladies, if you want to put one on your back and sit against it, it'll start heating on your back. And you don't have to put it in a microwave or anything. You can't. It's the same thing both places. No, yeah. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it'll warm your back, too, to make you warmer. Something else that I get. Hi, Diana, the canning. Nana, hi. How's it going down there? I hope those fires are long gone, sweetie. Um, the little hand warmers that they use. I use those. I put them in my boots. I put them in my socks. I put them in my um, gloves. Everywhere. Kmart and all the places have those. You can get them cheaper on eBay and stuff. So that's something else that I use. Ask hunters how they stay warm out there. Hi, JD. Allison. Next, um, tea lights. Um, what was the other one on here? Oh, oh, from. Okay, let me put that down there. Where's my card? Oh, oh. From Smudge, the doggy at Two Family Homestead, and Celia, C E L I A, and Kaylee, K A Y L E E. Uh, first, the uplifting news from Cher at Two Family Homestead from her two granddaughters, who I've just fallen in love with, and um, <laughs> Smudge. I got this for Christmas. <laughs> this is the, look at the eyes. My bee bug. Uh, hi, Life un Unwinded. Hi, gentlemen. Get it started. Hi. Um, I love it. So if you're out there, which they probably are, I'll tell you why in a minute. Cher, or no, excuse me, Cher. Smudge, Celia, or Kaylee. Thank you. Second, last night, um, I got a message from Cher. She was rushing to the hospital. Um, Kaylee, K-A-Y-L-E-E, -E, and Celia, C-E-L-I-A. You all know they're her granddaughters. Well, her mother, their grandmother, their other grandmother passed away last night. So I... I thought, and I asked clearance from Cher, because I don't know, because they're young kids. And, you know, they were at the hospital when this happened, and I thought, oh, my goodness, right after. Oh, there we are, Kaylee and Casey are. Oh, good, Cher, they're there. I thought it might be nice, and I don't know where she wants them sent. If you all would send them a card or something, because, you know, little girls like that, um, you, you know, you lose a grandmother. I lost my grandmother when I was... Oh, maybe 26. And it broke my heart. So um, if you can, um, you know, send a card or um, something, I don't know, maybe a little book or something, you know, sometimes there are books about that. I don't know. You have any ideas? Anything mm -hmm. that you think would be appropriate. Um, Thank you so much. The girls, yeah, they would love it. Um, and, you know, the girls, they know when they're streaming with Cher. They know they're on YouTube. Is it Chris's birthday? What is he, 100 and what? Yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yesterday? Chris, what are you, 100 and what, honey? 122. 122. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. You know, the girls, they know. Hi, Drive Chef, Drew. Hi, Allie, everybody. But, you know, Cher's granddaughters are... Part of YouTube. They're on there, they're streaming, they're making things, and I think it would mean a lot to them this time if the YouTube community, those of you that follow Two Family, and if you don't, I don't know why you don't, because that last uh, stream with Old Alabama Gardener was just awesome. So I don't know where you would send everything. Cher's gonna have to tell you, thank God she's here. Hi, Mountain Mama, good to see you. Um, so, oh my so you Chris you can um please just send even if it's a handwritten <laughs> note you know even if you draw a picture that actually might work just something you know and especially if they know um you know because to lose your other grandmother yeah I know I, I know I know Susan that's right like Christmas, you know, and they're up there in the hospital and I wrote to your back and I says oh my god you know are the girls there you know, I mean, that they don't at this age. So, you know, just whatever you think is appropriate or message share and she'll let you know. Okay? That, that, that's, 
that's really probably the most important. And Cher, I don't know if you missed it, but the girls in Smudge, I love it. <laughs> My mug, I love it. Aw. Okay. Now, as some of you knew, knew or watched, we took an impromptu walk down to the bee yard. We will be going more right now. I don't even. Yeah. Okay. Be late. Yes. Okay. Host some roots. Whatever. Yeah. Please just send share something um, for them. Even a handwritten note. You don't have to go buy it. Just something handwritten, you know, crayons, anything. But back to this, we took a, um, a trip to the bee yard. Uh, we normally snowshoe down there, but we didn't. Um, and you know you got to go i don't know jerome how far your bees are away from your home i don't i don't know i haven't figured that out on your streams but you have to go down you have to see what's going on with your bees in the winter and when we got down there um since we like to keep to keep everyone um to keep the tops what is it the top um you have you need ventilation in your eyes covers. telescoping covers 300 feet okay jerome we're a little farther, farther. actually that's about 300 very close to yeah where we are um jerome are your hives covered in snow our hives are covered in snow and if you watch that stream jerome you will see that we don't cover all our boxes because our hives were too big. Um, you know, too many boxes big. Um, we have mouse excluders. You will also see those on there. Anybody else that's into, into bees. Um, we listen just with our ears and we normally um, take the stethoscope down there. Um, no, no, no snow. Uh, yeah, the lucky mm. ones. Yeah. You know, I just want to say, folks, if you see what these bees go through to make it through the winter, it, it's just, you know, we thought we were bad and we got a couple of bee magazines. Well, actually, I guess I can mention the magazine. What's the, um, what's the one magazine? American Bee The Journal. American Beekeeper, Beekeeping. American, no, American Bee Journal. The American Bee Journal, okay? Um, you figure... Our daughter got it for um, for daddy <laughs> uh, for some event, some a birthday or something. And um, then we, um, I continued it. But there's a picture on there of um, some bees where they had to dig the hives out of the snow. Where was that at? I didn't look yet. We didn't look where it is. So when you look at what they go through, it's just it's just awesome what these bees can live through. Um, so right now we're endeavoring to keep them alive. Correcto? Yeah, that's it. And there's not much you can do except, um, you know, keep them alive. Jerome. Mar uh, hi, uh, Marley. Good to see you. Are there any questions from our walk to the bee yard? Other than me saying I'm tired. <laughs> we were telling, we were showing you the different areas. Yes, was warm. What was, okay. The different areas. Um, I keep saying Jerome because I just came, we just came across him in Deep South Stream. Um, and he has, you need to go to his channel. He's got great beekeeping action over there. Um, oh, yes, beekeeping alive. Yes, go back to some of, yeah. Ours are in snow right now, Marley. But um, you figure, my mind just went bang. What was I going to say? No, you're talking about the trip to the bee yard. Oh, yeah. I'm there. You know, um, what cardboard boxes instead of building wooden ones? Hmm, why cardboard? Um, over the wooden ones, That's, Grandpa. Oh, on top They're of on the top of the wooden ones. Can, oh, my mug. Oh, yes, there's my mug. Look at the eyes, folks. That's what makes the mug. Look at those. Isn't that the cutest little thing? Show oh. The back. Show the back. oh, in the back. 
He has a little bow. Oh, thank you, girls. Oh, they have something coming too. Friday, I think. Um, can she see it? Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, Martin Mama. Oh. Oh. The cardboard um, is waxed to keep away water. Yes, but why use, you got that? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Well, cardboard's easier to work with. Um, it's pre-made. It's not terribly expensive. Uh, wood is heavier, so we'd be putting wood on top of wood go down and look at the hives we open the tops to see if everything's okay open them very quickly in the winter um to do that with wood would be so uh, um we have some plywood as a windbreak working with that so um, we're still improving on the winter prep like i said any ideas let us know um a lot of people, I mean, everybody does something different. Some people wrap them in tar, is it tar paper. Tar, tar paper. We yeah. don't do that. Greed is meat. Greed. Meat is fermented honey. Okay. Uh, some people have the cardboard, but then they put like an insulator. Uh, is it styrofoam? Um, you mean between the cardboard and the, the cardboard and the and the, uh, and the regular and the hive. hive? Yeah. Some people, yeah, some people styrofoam do that. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's you know I you know I, I'm anxious to see how the hives from Louisiana make out. Bless their hearts. Mm. Uh, usually the big thing is get when you get bees from southern places. They bring southern. You know, bees, we haven't requeened those to my knowledge. So you've got southern bees in a northern climate. You know, that, that's a big thing. Um, anyone that wants to know what a good idea is, is raising queens. Everybody's looking for queens. That's true. I, I would like to get into raising queens. It doesn't look like rocket science. Something else that would be good is nukes. We, Actually, it does seem like rocket science sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We try to keep one or two um is that a beehive oh yeah uh, uh <laughs> just saying oh. oh yeah my kettle yeah very observant um yes that's a beehive kettle yep, yeah it's a beehive yep. yeah um beehive kettle yeah um okay what <laughs> I have ice queens already. Well, <laughs> yeah, we, um, cold and wind is what chills. Ooh, yeah. the wind makes it really cold. Ooh. Ooh, I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, I agree, Jerome. That's where we're trying uh, to. <laughs> yes. The, the wind breaks, I need to do a little more work on the wind breaks. Yeah. Hey, uh, the other day I was going through some old memory lane back to when I was actively working for a utility here. So we're going back maybe, I don't know, how many years? 17? Sorry, what, what how is... many years when I was working here? Oh. Oops, um, wait, wait, wait. 11, 17? 16. 16. And for one Halloween, I'll have to put that picture up. I dressed up um, as a queen bee. <laughs> the... Craig wants to know how much honey. Oh, yeah. Right. Well. It's varied. Uh, Last year we got essentially nothing. Nothing. The year before due that, to a drought, we were. It was hi, uh, Russ. It was coming out of our ears. This year, we uh, still haven't done it yet. We still haven't. Spun uh, it. it's. Um, it was. Uh, we have how many frames to, to, to what to extract? We got the frames. Um, uh, we let just me think. Uh, Oh, see, maybe back, see, 20 back, see, back. maybe I'm maybe guessing 20, 20 or so frames of honey I don't yeah, know we don't get so far in that I believe this is uh, where it's just our we're missing some skill and experience 
we're not getting the typical amount of honey from hives that a lot of people are claiming. Um, they're Gosh, saying yeah. 60 pounds a hive is... Yikes. Let's okay, see. we're back. Oh, we're back. We're back, but we're I'm going to fire up our uh, hotspot just in case because we were having some trouble. We the think the day. internet is frozen. Yeah. Hi, Grampy Campy. Hold on. Picker it. I'm looking. Yeah. He had died. I, we're back. You can't see now either? Oh, boy. Oh, I can see. Um, I'm trying okay. to reset on the over here. Oh, are you? I can see. I'm, I'm trying to get a um, thing over here. I'm looking for that picture of honey. I'm going to pick her it. I yeah, know Mark. I have it. What year was that, Mark? What year was what? I don't, the honey, the honey, the honey, the main honey. Oh, no, that's two, honey. Two years ago when oh, we dear. had more honey. Yeah. Um, uh, 50, 2015. Oh, okay. 2015. Was a very good year. I'm getting it. Anyway, we He's don't. Saying we're back now. Yeah, we're back. We don't really know. We don't measure it. We just, you know, and we don't use any knives or anything to cut it off. You know, we just um, we scrape it with. I don't know what you call those things. Do you know? Uh, um, uh, there's a. It's an uncapping. uncapping tool. We scrape it with an uncapping tool. And the first year, I do know. We just, you know, we don't really think like most people because we we gave it all away <laughs> oh my god well, we gave it to the church we gave a bunch to the church we gave a bunch to the school okay here was the first year you, you see anybody see that minute man all right you guys see that tell me you can see so i can take my hand down got it I see it, I'm and I'm well, over don't here. Don't forget, there's a several second delay. There's a seven second delay. Several. Okay, I'll wait. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's it. it just okay, came up. it just came up. Okay, I. Yeah. Some of those containers were um. Some of those containers, a lot of those containers are. Where'd it go? Are gallons. So, I mean, how do you measure that? You know, I mean, what, like the ones all in the back, they're, they're gallons. Yeah. So, what does that mean? You know, I don't know. Yeah, we Jerome, ran out of jars. Yeah, we Jerome, just... we have, yeah, uh, our honey tends to be yes. very light in color. Very um, light. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, very sweet. I don't know, see? Oh. Yeah, uh, it's very sweet. It's very light in color. It's very distinct. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, at the church, our youth group was going to um, 10 pounds per gallon. Oh, really? Oh, they're, he's talking about weight. Oh, is that how that works? Um, actually, you know, this is where we haven't really. We don't got, really get into that. Okay, we haven't happy. because, um, yeah. We only had one really, nice here goes, really good harvest. Get out. What? 
and simply and not uh, nice here goes for $65 a quart of honey. Are you serious? A quart? Are you serious? Um, well, don't forget a quart is a lot. That's highway robbery, is wait it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. A quart is um oh boy. This is um, a quart isn't that much. Is that 16 ounces? Okay, guys, this is my uh, bad memory. Yeah, that's what I've oh my god. If that's, oh. If that's 16. Where are, what state are you in? Okay, wait a minute. Eighteen dollars a pint? Where? Whoa. Good grief. It's about um ten dollars <sighs> for eight ounces up here. It is? Yeah. That's at the know. local store. Uh, there's another apiary uh, several miles away. See, I don't know. I don't price it. Is that high here in Oklahoma? Let me see. Sixty-five a quart. Yes. I, I don't know. That's. Um, I don't think that's right. But. Wow. See, twenty-two a pint. Is that high? Um, I see. Pickering saying twenty dollars a quart. Uh how much wow. a quart? Money. What's going on? You know, I will tell you this, folks. Grandpa's nine, place. He's saying 25. Oh, nine, five, Good. Zero, 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 nine. We did not get into this. dollars a pint. Yeah. What? We didn't get into this for the honey? I'm going to put this up here. I think the internet's just. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm not getting anything anywhere. So that's not going to work. We didn't. We didn't. Um, we didn't get into this for the honey, at all. <laughs> okay, we have interest in bottling honey. Do we? <laughs> well, not a, not so far. No, no, no we've no, got to. No. We've got to get our um, techniques yeah. down. Twenty-four um, quart. Local wildfires. Th this is. Flowers, wild we, flowers, I think. Well, yeah. How do you know what it is? 24 quarts? Well, because you know what's blooming at the time. Some people are that, you know, it's just your timing. You look at it. You know, are there, you, got, you have to look at, um, you have to look at, are there a lot of beekeepers in your area? Um, we have a beekeeper down the road, down the road, and one down the road that way and down the road. Yeah, Grampy Campy, but see, I have other crafts like my soaps. I love I love my soaps more. Uh, Grampy Campy, when we launch our Etsy store, which is coming, uh, it's going to be all about soaps and things like that. I, I just, I don't, um, I don't know how to, I don't know, maybe we're the odd man out. Um, um, like I said, we're still focusing on the trying bees. to get it. Trying to get it better. Yeah, we're trying to get our bees better. And um, I figure, um, you know, we're, we're just into the bees. Why is that ringing? <laughs> I thought I unplugged it. Anyway, we're just into the bees and getting the bees going. You know, if you get into this with um, thinking that you're going to make a fortune with honey, if we have, a, have bees yet, she wants... The wax to make. That's another thing, Grandpa's place. You're going to get some wax, but not much. What's that saying here? 816 ounces in one pound goes for $1. It could be this. The, the small beekeeper is kind of going by the wayside. Um. Okay, let me see what Grizz is saying. Uh, That's Tyler regulated. We have three hives. Any more than that, you have to be licensed in our limit. Oh, my where is, goodness. Where is Grizz? Oregon. That could Oregon? be why, yeah. Huh. It has, a lot has to do with your zoning. Jerome, I'm going to guess you're in agricultural. We're very, our property is zoned residential. Everybody around here is agricultural, residential. You have to have 25 highs without being licensed. You can have 25 without being licensed. What's with yeah. this license? Laws in most states, they are. We have laws in New York too, but they're not enforced. They just they. Um, Even if you have 
True. We don't have laws for um, limitations on number of hives, but we're supposed to have hive inspections, but they eliminated all the Oh, hives. yeah, they eliminated it. They yeah. eliminated it all, so, um, you know, you're on your own. Are up here, club alone, there are over, what, two, three hundred <laughs> <numbers>. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Noah's Ark? Over. You can't yeah. pump your own gas in Oregon? <laughs> Is she serious? No. I think serious. that's a joke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oklahoma only has hives to have inspections to sell. Huh? Oh, wait a minute. Oklahoma only has to have hive inspections. You have to have inspections if you're going to sell. Huh? In other words, if you're going to sell, you got to have inspections. We can sell honey at market with prep. Huh? Okay, good night, two family. Bye, two family. Take care. I never heard of some of this stuff. Well, it does vary state to state. I mean, yeah, we're, I, then we're yeah. very fortunate. Yeah, we are. Um, you have to register as an apiary if you have more than six eyes. Yeah. Oh, you're in the South Grandpa's place? And don't forget, in Florida, they have, oh, yes, to, Florida, they yeah. have to brand their hives with numbers and be inspected. You have to register them. We asked for an inspector. We don't have them here. Here in Mississippi, if you sell in stores, you will get inspected. Wait a minute. Chris <laughs> is saying it's against state law to pump your own gas. Yeah. Is Chris serious? I don't know. I thought it was you a mean joke. If you drive up to a gas station, you can't, it doesn't have pump your own. I find that almost in, in New Jersey. It's the other state. New Jersey, I can believe. Yeah, but no, well, New Jersey. It's gonna, your price of honey is going to depend on your, I guess your state regulations, Texas, I can sell barred from selling locally elements. in jars, but I am banned from selling to this bottle. This is fascinating. State to state, you just get, boy. Can't do it? Wow. Uh, That's the, the, the I gas. wouldn't sell He's talking anything. talking about gas pumping. Yeah, I wouldn't, you can't, if you can't pump it, your own a gas, I don't wow. know. Wow. You know, it, it gets into where you live, folks. I really do. Um, Good. And it, there are, <laughs> keep in mind, here's the thing with beekeeping a lot of people don't know. And Jerome, maybe you can agree or dispute. The inspector lady here is picky and we don't have. Picky. <laughs> First of all, there are not enough honeybees in the United States. Thank God we're not monetized. Okay. There are not enough honeybees in the United States to pollinate all the crops. This is true. That is a fact. Okay. That's a fact. To counteract that, there are very large bee places, and they are commercial beekeepers. Mm -hmm. And if we go up down the road that way and up the road, we will see where they have the peaches and the apples and the grapes and all these various orchards, because we're in the middle of a far country. They rent bees, and people go there with a flatbed full of them. Okay, and they rent them out for, and then they pick them all up, and then they take them someplace else and rent them out. Big money, folks. I don't know, Jerome Farms, if that's where you're headed, but big money, big money in that. That's what I do, Grandpa. Oh, he did. Okay. Um. Yeah, Noah's Ark. Uh, they are endangered, although not officially. Wow. Um. For the first time in the last year, um, the federal government put six bees on an endangered list. I believe they're a type of uh, bumblebee in Hawaii, but that's the first time they put yeah. any type of bee on an endangered list. So they, it has happened. Um, Gee, I don't know, guys. I mean, it seems like the South. Where in the South are they friendly to beekeeping? Anyway, Florida. Um, I think they're friendly to beekeeping. It's just when you get in the economics of it. Oh, beekeeping in Florida, they, that whole almond uh, crop out there has to have bees brought in. And that's bad for the bees. Um, wow. Because huh. it's a monoculture, a monoculture well, environment. And then they ship those up to Maine to do the blueberries. Oh my goodness. Grandpa's place. So, that is that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, after California almonds and put them on canola here. Yeah, right. Because there aren't enough for the almonds. And that's not necessarily good for the bees. We don't think it is. Okay. Um 
I don't know, big bucks in that. I'm not shipping my bees anywhere, but uh, yeah. canola builds them up. Oh, does it really? Hmm, we'll keep that in mind just to whatever. Here we are. Oh boy, I, I don't know, folks. I'm gonna say it's the storm. Um, bees are not native to. Oh, is that what it is? That's what it is, Chris. Um, Grandpa's place bumblebees at Woodbees. I'm building a trailer to transport six oh. hives to a remote location this spring. How would you make this? Great idea, Jerome. Why? <laughs> uh, you think they'll do better there? Or um, very interesting. Uh, here, because the beekeepers compete in contests, like we have like a huge state fair, which you probably have there and other places. They won't even tell you where their beehives are. They are native. They are native bees before European. Oh. They're, they're responding to Grizz who said that they're oh. not native, so what pollinated before bees? Yeah, I think yeah, it was I everything. I think bumblebees, it was bumblebees, butterflies. They're talking of bats, butterflies. Bees, yeah, all kinds of. There's all really? kinds of different flies and bees. Yeah, there's huh. carpenter bees. Um, huh. The problem is one of the problems, and I just read this, is that in the past few decades, I don't know the exact time. The number of insects has been reduced, I think they said by 75% due to um, insecticides and so on. And they say the way you know this is those of you who drive and remember when your car windshield used to be covered with insects yeah. in the summer. Oh, we're here. And now <laughs> it isn't that much. Um, that's a little clue. Uh, Jerome, we don't have a lot of beekeepers uh, really near us. There's uh, yeah, um, one about five miles away, and that's the only only one within 20 miles of which we're aware. See, the thing is, is are there a lot of people around you that have a lot of wildflowers and, and plants, or does everybody nice and neat and just have lawns and <clears throat> green shrubs and stuff? See, here people have flowers. There are a lot of fields and things. Um, a few, but not within range. The big thing is going to be the flowers. So this is cycling. You cannot have been driving by my cabin. Okay, okay. I think. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on your environment. We have a little bug called the oh, a love bug. Oh how oh they're terrible. Okay, yeah. Oh, we are yeah. constantly planting stuff too for our bees, and there, we have like, like 
we gag on leaving weeds up that we know are good for the bees. Like, um, what's that yellow stuff in the fall? Oh, Mr. Kid Gaming. Hi. Golden rod. Uh, yeah, golden rod. Um, golden rod. Like things like that we leave up. Those weeds, thistle or whatever, you know, we leave up um, because the bees like them. You know, Joe Pie weed is something else the bees like. So we, we, we have a lot of stuff here. But, Jerome, I don't know what you're sitting on, but we're like, we have 19 acres and very little of it is mowed. Well, maybe how much is mowed? I don't know. Mow about four acres. About four acres mowed. Everything else is wild living. <laughs> okay. Well, a lot of it's yeah. wooded. Wooded, but. So we don't have. We had, if you, we have, um. And it's not just the flowers. We thought it was just the flowers. Like we had a beekeeper come here once because we had a swarm in our, um, our one of our apple trees. Like we have apple trees and pear trees and stuff like that. Um, from a suburban setting, most folks live on five acre okay tracks. Oh, that's not too bad, Jerome. Um, but they had, like she said, they'll go to the trees, like the elm trees and stuff. I don't know what they're getting out of there. Oh, and the one tree. What's um, the one tree that they really like? That, um, oh. Um, they, a part second. of the survey we were in this summer. Oh. Yeah. Um, um, it's a uh, linden. There's, no, the, the flower one when they said, send your bees after this tree has stopped blooming or something. Yeah, it's a linden. There's two other names, a linden but linden tree, is yeah. the one I remember. These will collect the uh, pine. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Pine honey. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, thank you for that, um, Grandpa's Place. Didn't know that. You beekeepers out there like Jerome and anybody else, we participated in a Western New York study this year. Well, a New York study about bees and mites and everything. And they send you everything. And next year they're looking to expand it out of state. So we will be contacting you if you want to participate in passing your information on. My father-in-law had a farmer plant watermelon. It's not mimosa, <laughs> Susan. Um, Made about eight. I don't wow. think we have that up here. If we do, it's not, not that much of it. You see what Jerome just said? Farmer <clears throat> planted. Watermelons. Watermelons, a mile. Well, gonna plant some yeah. watermelons. We have berries, well, blackberries. Yeah. We have like people around us that have all of that stuff. <clears throat> oh, Diane, I'm so sorry. Good to see you. Thank goodness you you know you have a home. I hope the air is cleared up a little. Um, I'll catch you on a stream somewhere. I know I will. Hello. Oh no. Okay, you take care, sweetie. No, not towel, Susan. One of the names is Linden. Uh, I just not. Oh, there's I'm a just flower. Not, it's a white flower. I'm just not clicking. Yeah, we're having a on the other thing here. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Even trees, anything. So, and the other thing is, if your neighbors are using a lot of pesticides, that can't help. Yeah, and that's a big thing. Yeah, Jerome, uh, um, locust. Yeah, I'm thinking of planting yeah. honey locust. Yeah, yeah, we we have yeah. some uh, uh, a handful, maybe yeah. a mile and a half away, but I'm thinking of planting some here. Uses a lot of pestis. However you spell it. Yeah, it depends on where you live. Um, what's he saying? You're going to move your hives? Southern Ark Homestead. Oh, yeah, Southern Ark is, is good. How is she? I got to get her. Grant, how you doing, Grant? I got to come by there tomorrow. Grant his Thursday Thursdays. Grant, I was telling our son about your streams. Honey, locust trees. Get wiped out in ice storms. Ooh. Well, that's a consideration. <laughs> <laughs> we just had one. Um, oh, I want to show them about the. Oh, yeah. He's going to show. My husband has a picture to show you. Um, um, what, yeah, I wanted to show you something. It's something you probably don't see too often. 
Um, it's called. I'll show you the book too. I hope this okay. works. It's called festooning. Get the book. That's when honeybees link legs to span the open space in a hive, uh, such as when they're making comb. They actually have little hooks on their legs, and they hook to the other hooks. Um, yeah, they're amazing. I got one other picture. Uh, it, you don't see it this often. I've seen it a couple of times in the hive. Grizz, no comments on that picture. Um, this is another picture of festooning. Uh, they're hanging in the air there. Uh, so, yeah, they span the open distance um, by using those little hooks. So they're really... Um, they're like little jet fighters. They have so many different uh, different uh, parts of their body there. Yeah, a member in our bee club uh, several months ago, um, we, you know, whenever there's a bee event in the area, extended area, even because <laughs> we drove a while, they'll contact our bee club and they'll say, um, oh, who wants to go work a booth? And we'll be represented there, you know, the Western New York beekeepers, Western New York honey producing. Western New York, New York honey, honey producing producers. Producer producer Association. Association. Yeah. Um, one of the most amazing things. Yes, it is. And uh, I met one of our members, I have permission to do this YouTube. I asked her, okay. She is a retired teacher. You know, retired teachers, uh, subs, whatever, you always tell your students about something out there. Okay, leprechauns, something, space travel to keep them interested. She wrote a book, and it's called Hazel the Honeybee, and it's My Amazing Life Adventure, okay, and it's by Barbara Eckert, and I can't pronounce her last name. It's at the third grade level. The third grade level. However, folks, I would advise you to get the book. I'm just telling you because the book, uh, good. Um, okay, see several, you, Grant. Bye, Grandpa. Good to see you. Station, good to see you. Because it, it tells it from Hazel's point of view. And she's born and what her responsibilities are and living in the hive and on and on and on it's just a fascinating book she has um colored pictures in it like uh you know honey a frame of honey different um different types of plants the book is very inexpensive gotta get in the bed in the bed right oh plain That's early Grant. Okay, Grant. Yeah. Grant, no Thursday, Thursday? I don't know. Okay. It looks like he may be gone. <laughs> he may be gone. He's going to bed. Uh, you know, a swarm, you know, things like that. It's just a very, very good book. I found it useful. Uh, you know, when you're a beekeeper, you read everything. I can't tell you how many bee books we have, but um, it's a good book it did, because it's written from the point of view, how long I live, what will happen to me, things like that. And I, I just really wanted to show you that because there's a lot of information out there. Okay, Gramp, uh, Grampy Campy, thanks for stopping by. We will. Happy New Year's. Don't go by the movie, A Bee's Life. <laughs> okay, I saw that, that, that thing. But... Um, Beekeeping, you know, people say, well, it's expensive. Well, it's expensive. Um, I'm an advocate for swarms, and I'm an advocate for bee clubs for those two very reasons. Um, if you're going to get bees, this is how I see it. You know, we, we joined a bee club, and before I even got bees, I read about them for like a year and, what you know, read and studied and everything else. Sorry, bee lady, I, I stepped out. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, bye, Drive Shaft Drew. Good to have seen you. Um, if you're going to have bees, I would I would say you need to get in a bee club because then you have someone to call. 
you'll have a mentor. Usually they give you a mentor. You have people to call and, and talk to things about. Um, and this is a good platform too because you know now we know people that have these. And it's just a good thing. Also, a good way to get hives is swarms. And I still say swarms are the strongest, make the strongest hives. I don't know if anybody else believes that, but I do because that's been our personal experience. Um, that's just how I see it. Um, and we are going to be expanding. So it should be really interesting around here come the spring and summer. Yeah. Um, as I said before, we'll be going to the bee yard in the winter. There's not much see to see in the winter. There really isn't, except the snow and the trees and everything. But um, any questions on what you did see? I asked that before. Us out there? Later, Drew. That's Chris. Chris, okay. Um, Chris, is, was it really your birthday yesterday? And are you really 122? I mean, he said he was 134. Oh, 34? Yeah. Okay. Because he said he was, he just thrown out. I um, am going to look up some of these rules across the country on beekeeping because I find this extraordinary. Remember, folks, something that I said before. Don't forget your town hall. The smaller the city, the better. And sometimes, I don't do the bees, but I do the honey. Oh, dippers, okay, Gene. <laughs> you might be able to get, um, yes, they are, Pickard. I Swarms are, <laughs> they're yeah. raring to go. They are much stronger. Your town hall, you can usually get variances and exceptions to everything. Uh, you can, unless... You've really gone into a neighborhood and made your neighbors all mad. They really don't care what you do. And if your neighbors don't care, your town hall isn't going to care. So you may want to think about that, too. When well, people say, well, the, the zoning says we can't do this. Well, you can get a variance, you know, as long as the neighbors don't care. It depends on the state like anything else. Oh, really? Another I state think. thing? Okay, folks, that's, that's New what, York. I'm, I'm just thinking, okay. yeah, that is New York, so... You just uh, don't great information know. on starting a beehive. Uh, Scarborough, if you're still here, ah, swarm might. You got to catch the swarm. So, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have had a problem. You know, if you're afraid of bees, you, you know, like I say in my streams in the summer, you got to have confidence in your bee suit. You gotta have confidence but, in your. But bee if suit. you're just starting, you don't know what to do with a swarm. You don't yeah, know how to true, handle too. them. You don't have the equipment. Yeah, that's true, too. Um, I just don't think that's how you want to start. Well, I still say a bee club first. Watch the swarm catching guys on YouTube. Yeah, that's a good idea, Jerome. Oh, yeah. And you've got to let go of your fear and take your smoker and have confidence in your equipment. And the cities in Texas are not big on on what? Because Africanized bees. Oh, really? Yeah, they got Africanized oh. down there. Scarborough, blueberry blossom, and wow. orange blossom. That's too bad. Well, I don't know how far north the Africanized bees are. Mm. Anybody know? Yeah, I've seen a map. They're up oh. to southern North Carolina, I think, Ooh, or northern or northern Georgia, somewhere around there. Um, Hi, Bob they... Homestead. Are they not? Are they killing them? Around here would be difficult. I have seen one. Wow, Chris. Oh boy. Well, you have to um, unless somebody's going to call you. Um, you got your name out there, then you either need to set a bait hive for swarms. You put it up at least 10 feet in a tree. They've got it on YouTube how to make one. Um, Ooh. Or that that's the traditional way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree, Grandpa's Place. I think the yeah. freezing is stopping them from going further north. Yep, swarm call list. Yep. 
Um, and the other thing is, um, that's good for us though. Yeah. African bees can't take cold weather. Is that the idea? Yeah. They're not adapted yet. Is there something about their honey that's so fa fantastic? Anybody know? They just make a lot because they're extremely aggressive. <laughs> what was this saying? I'll do the honey dippers. I don't think so. Yeah, they've got, yeah, Grizz, they got it on uh, YouTube. You can build one out of, um, leftover uh plywood what's that a bay hive yeah forms. yeah i like that idea you talked about of putting the stuff in the tree oh that's the slovenian the slovenian swarm, way swarm swarm seducer yes because slovenia is the but you've got to have beehive wax to do it old wax it has to be old yes oh it has to smell like a hive yeah Jerome hangs new boxes and trees. Hangs new boxes and trees. Does that work? <laughs> that was my question. Jerome, does that work? New boxes and trees? Oh. Hmm. They swarm a lot more than European bees, so when the hives are weaker, the winter comes. Oh. Well, yeah, whatever, that could be Whatever true, keeps too. them down. <laughs> Bay hives use queen pheromone and oil. And old yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it does, but Wrestling. that's true. I don't know. I've seen a lot of swarms just. So I mean, Jerome's saying that nuke boxes. So are you having um, success, Jerome, with nuke, um, nuke boxes? Usually you'll find vegetable gardening where the bees and I Really? Oh yeah. Bees generally, unless you, unless they're at their hive, there's nothing to defend. Right. As long as you're not trying to squish one, I suppose. Yeah. What's with these beekeepers um, that I see that don't have any gloves or anything? Somebody has to explain that one to me. Um. That's tired of the inside of two hives. Okay, that should work, Grandpa's place. Yeah, that should work. Well, we may be back down there this week. We may not. Nine it's 9 o'clock. Simply 7 is coming on. And, um, you know, send us your comments and everything. And like I say, we may be back down there. But, um, you know, if there's anything you want us to discuss next week specifically, We'll drum up something special. Wear gloves. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming by. And um, we're going to go because Simply 7 is coming on. And we want to go see them and whoever else is out there. And take care. And we will see you next Wednesday. Okay? Okay. Thumbs happy, up. Thanks, happy Bob. New Year. Yeah. Happy everybody. New Year. We'll see you in the New Year. Bye.